வினை வலியும் தன் வலியும் மாற்றான் வலியும் துணை வலியும் தூக்கி செயல் உழவரை தூக்காத ஒப்புரவா சஸ்கச்சிவன் மாகாணத்தின் ஷேவூட் பார்க் தொகுதி பிரதிநிதியான திரு கானட் ஜெனுவிஸ் எங்களோடு நேர்காணலுக்கு வந்திருக்கின்றார் அவரது நேர்காணலின் பிரதான நோக்கம் விரைவில் கனேடிய பாராளுமன்றத்தில் சட்டமாக்கப்படவிருக்கும் ஒரு மனித உரிமைகள் சார்ந்த ஒரு சட்ட திருத்தத்துக்கான முயற்சிகளை பலரும் எடுத்து வருகின்றார்கள் அந்த வகையில் அதை கொண்டு வந்த கன்சர்வேட்டிவ் கட்சி உறுப்பினர் திரு பிலிப் லோரன்ஸ் அவர்கள் நொதம்பர்லாண்ட் பீட்டர்போரோ தொகுதியை பிரதிநிதித்துவப்படுத்துபவர் அவருடைய முயற்சி வெற்றியளிக்க வேண்டும் என்பதற்காக திரு கானட் ஜெனுவிஸ் போன்ற இதர பாராளுமன்ற உறுப்பினர்களும் இந்த சட்ட மூலத்துக்கு ஆதரவு தேடி தங்களது முயற்சிகளை மேற்கொண்டு வருகின்றார்கள் இந்த சட்ட மூலம் குறிப்பாக தமிழருக்கும் தமிழர் போன்று பாதிக்கப்பட்டவர்களுக்கும் உதவியாக இருக்கும் என்பதனால் இந்த முயற்சியில் அவர்கள் ஈடுபட்டிருக்கின்றார்கள் நீண்ட காலமாக தமிழ் சமூகத்தின் அக்கறை கொண்டு செயற்பட்டு வரும் ஒரு பாராளுமன்ற உறுப்பினர் என்ற வகையில் திரு கானட் ஜெனுவிஸ் அவர்கள் தமது தொகுதியில் தமிழர்கள் இல்லாமல் இருந்தும் கூட இம்முயற்சியில் ஈடுபட்டு வருகின்றார் என்பது மெச்சத்தக்க விடயம் அவரது முயற்சிகளுக்கு ஆதரவு தர வேண்டும் என்பது எங்களது நோக்கம் அதன் காரணமாகவே இந்த நேர்காணலை நாங்கள் ஒழுங்கு செய்திருக்கின்றோம் மிஸ்டர் கானட் ஜெனுவிஸ் இஸ் அ கன்சர்வேட்டிவ் எம்பி ரெப்ரஸன்டிங் ஷேவுட் பார்க் கான்ஸ்டிடுவன்சி இன் சஸ்கச்சவன் ப்ராவின்ஸ் மிஸ்டர் கானட் ஜெனுவிஸ் is an ardent promoter of human rights all around the world especially for the tamils in canada who are seeking redress and justice for the people who have perished in the mulivai kal during the last phase of the war mr garnet chenuis is joining us virtually to provide some insight of the proposed bill c281 which is to be voted on june 7th in the canadian parliament Thank you Mr. Garnet Genius for giving this interview for Marmoli and the Tamil Journal the proposed bill C281 as far as i know will amend four different acts how do you think the proposed changes will impact the tamil people either in canada or who are living around the world yes thank you very much bill C281 Uh, it was put forward by my conservative colleague Philip Lawrence from Peterborough and I'm pleased to be seconding the bill and working with him on it. Uh this is a bill that covers a lot of ground on international human rights and it would be a game changer in terms of Canadian engagement with and support for human rights on the world stage. Uh, conservatives want to see Canada be the freest country in the world and we also want to see Canada be a light in the world for freedom and democracy promoting those uh those uh, ideas and values uh, to other countries around the world and this bill has a number of different parts to it uh, it requires the government to table an annual report on the work it's doing to advance human rights and to include as part of that report information about political uh, prisoners so uh, those facing arbitrary de- detention prisoners of conscience around the world uh, uh and the the bill creates a mechanism by which individuals could be nominated for sanctions so parliamentary committees can recommend individuals be sanctioned and the government has to provide a response to those recommendations uh, and uh, and in in particular they have to explain why or why not they've uh, chosen to sanction certain individuals uh, the bill would amend the broadcasting act so that the the uh, mouthpieces uh, of of authoritarian foreign states would not have access to broadcasting licenses here in Canada and it would amend the cluster munitions act uh, as uh, as as many people will will be aware of just the horrific impact of cluster munitions uh, on the lives of civilians and these were used uh, in Sri Lanka uh, we want to uh, we want to build on the past work of banning cluster munitions but also this bill would build on that work by preventing anyone in Canada from investing in companies that are producing cluster munitions so as you can see there's a lot of different kinds of provisions in it uh but uh but i think that that makes it more effective because we've put together bundled together uh multiple different kinds of of uh, initiatives all with the goal of using this bill 
uh, to move the ball forward on human rights. Will these amended acts impact international human rights groups or agencies like UNHCR? Yeah, so the, 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 the different amendments uh, work in, in, in different ways, but the, the main thrust of the bill is strengthening the hand of Parliament relative to the executive. So generally, it's Parliament parliamentarians that have driven forward uh, human rights causes in the past. And this bill requires the executive branch to be more accountable to, to Parliament on human rights issues. Uh, what we've seen with the Liberals is that they are, they've been... Um, missing in action on a lot of human rights issues. The parliament has tried to push them. There have been uh, recognition, moments of recognition in parliament, but the government hasn't actually taken those up and, and implemented them. So um, that's one reason why conservatives want to replace the current government with the new government. Uh, mm -hmm. But also uh, we think this is an effective legislative framework into the future uh, for ensuring that uh, governments will be more accountable to parliament for what they're doing on human rights. Bill C-281 will, I think, and make that change uh, in the long term. The Magnitsky Law is about bringing sanctions on foreign nationals, etc. How will this impact the current Sri Lankan regime, the current or former armed forces of Sri Lanka? The Magnitsky Act is about uh, having targeted sanctions against individuals who are involved in human rights abuses. The trend in sanctions has very much been to try to focus uh, in a more granular way on individuals that are responsible for human rights abuses and holding those individuals accountable. Uh, and the Magnitsky Act does that. Now, the Magnitsky Act already exists. It was a conservative private members bill uh, that uh, that passed two parliaments ago. Uh, but one of the problems we see is that the Magnitsky Act provides tools for the government uh, to sanction human rights abusers. But they are tools that the government has been for a long time reluctant to use. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, li liberals have, have been way behind in terms of actually using Magnitsky sanctions. Uh, and so we have um, uh, we put forward the idea of a parliamentary trigger, that if a parliamentary committee passes a motion uh, recommending someone be sanctioned, that the government has to provide a response to that recommendation. The government preserves the discretion around that. Uh, but the government has to provide a, a response saying why they have or have not sanctioned particular individuals. And it's a way of allowing parliamentarians, but also community members to drive forward the idea of people being, uh, being sanctioned who are involved in human rights abuses. Does this bill need unanimous support on the floor to get it passed? It doesn't need unanimous support. We just need a majority, but we're, we're aiming for unanimous support and it'll, it'll, uh, you know, we want to get as much support as we can. But the main thing is that it passes the vote coming up. June 7th is the final vote on it. How do you think the Tamil community in Canada can help to get this bill passed? Absolutely. I would encourage everyone in the community to reach out to their member of parliament and encourage him or her to vote in favor of and speak in favor of and support Bill C-281. Uh, every, um, every bit is going to help us. And uh, we, need, uh, we need every MP to be hearing from their constituents that this issue is indeed a, a major priority. In closing, is there anything that you want to say to the Tamil community? It's been a pleasure uh, working with the, the Tamil community on so many human rights issues. Actually, when I uh, last spoke to the bill, it was on uh, Tamil Genocide Memorial Day, and I highlighted the contributions to the Tamil community specifically uh, in the context of that day and human rights work. I know the Tamil community has been at the forefront of human rights advocacy, not only for Tamils in Sri Lanka, but actually human rights advocacy in general everywhere. Uh, and uh, so I'm I'm uh, eager to continue to work with people in the community on this, and, and I hope to have their active support as we try to get this bill uh, passed into law. On that note, uh, Mr. Garner Genius, uh, on behalf of uh, Marumali Media and the Tamil Journal, our sincere appreciation for your effort, for you taking time off your business schedule to attend this interview, especially to your parliamentary assistant, Ali Samsan, and for Mr. Philip Lawrence, the MP for Northumberland Peterborough for sponsoring this uh, bill on behalf of uh, all the people, including Tamils. I really appreciate and thank you. Thank you very much.